Good morning. So here we are continuing with the story of David and his son Absalom. Absalom uh, had allowed resentment to fester in his heart about what his brother had done, his half-brother had done to his sister. And David had not dealt with it. And Absalom had been restored to Jerusalem after Joab um, pleaded with the king. Um, and he was two years in Jerusalem and neither Joab, the king's uh, right-hand man, nor the king had seen him. And he forces the issue with Joab at the end of chapter 14. But it does describe in chapter 14 how beautiful he was. Absalom was a beautiful man. He was a very attractive man. He was a, he, he had everything on his side. Um, uh, in verse 25 of 2 Samuel 14, it says, There was no one so much to be praised for his beauty as Absalom. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. He was beautiful, a very attractive man. I think he took after his father. His father had been a very attractive man. And he, he had a great weight of hair. Um, he was famous for his hair. And he began, I think, the festering sore that David had not dealt with, which was in Absalom's heart over the rape of his sister. And the fact that he got away with murdering his brother without any punishment except exile from his father um, gave him a boldness um, and he decided to go for the kingdom. And uh, it just it, it it's just a reminder that you know things grow. Resentments and upsets, if not dealt with, do grow and they become something else. We really do need to deal with things as quickly as we can, uh, as the as the scripture says. Don't let the the sun go down on your anger when you're upset with someone, or you've upset someone, or you've been really unpleasant to someone. Whatever the cause is, sort it out. Don't let it fester. Please don't let it fester. The most important thing you can ever say to a couple getting married <coughs> is be quick to say sorry. Be quick, be the first one. Outdo your partner in being the first one to say, I'm sorry. Even when the fault is equal on both sides or even when the other side is more at fault than you are. Be reconciled. The marriage is much more important than the issue that you were dealing with that day. And what did Absalom do? I think that's enough for my thought for the day. I don't think I want to go on any further. Um, I want to just keep saying this. You know, we have to keep short accounts with each other. Don't let things fester. In families, when things fester, there are rifts and members of the family don't speak to each other for years. This should not be. As far as we can do it, we should resolve these issues. It is a very important thing. Um, you may think, well, I, I spoke all of this yesterday, but this story of Absalom goes on for another two or three chapters. And the whole thing that grows and grows and grows and gets bigger and bigger and actually ends up with David leaving Jerusalem and Absalom taking over. Uh, that's how far it got before uh, David was able to come back. And even then, David did not want Absalom punished. Absalom was a favourite. Absalom was treated differently to how David would have treated anybody else. And Absalom knew it. And he took advantage. We have to be very careful not to be, have favourites in our families. Favouritism um, and, and helping people evade punishment for what they've done does not help them, is not good for them. It was not good for Absalom not to be taken to task over what he'd done. It was not good for Amnon. I mean, it resulted in his death. But David leaving Absalom and not actually, even when... Absalom came to Jerusalem. David did not punishment punish him. David did not even speak to him, as far as we know, 
about what had happened. It says at the end of chapter 14, So Absalom came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. He loved him. He loved Absalom. And he treated him differently to how he, had treated, he would have treated anybody else. If Joab had done it, Joab would have been severely punished. David had favourites. We should not have favourites. We should be... God does not have favourites. <coughs> God loves each of us exactly the same. And he extends his grace to all of us. Not based on what we've done, but based on his great love for us. His love is the same for each of us. And we have to be really, 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 really careful about favouritism, especially in families. Guard against it. Guard against it. That's my thought for the day. It's enough for today. And I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.